Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Wednesday, 1st of April. April Fool's seems a perfect time to analyse last week's Q&A and Tuesday night's Insight, where mandatory internet filtering has been debated. Now, I've lost count of the strawman arguments put forth by Senator Conroy and other Conservative commentators. I believe unlike many opponents of mandatory filtering, I believe the internet should remain unfiltered, but that doesn't mean I like the idea of illegal content like child porn. I understand how the internet works, and so I see that this filter is doomed. So I thought I'd outline some key points aimed at keeping our internet free while also having plenty to do with protecting our kids. Hopefully a few of these will help at your next dinner party debate. Firstly, where is the demand for this solution? Ask the nation if child porn should be available online and you'll get a resounding no. Ask if we should live under a mandatory censorship regime and you'll get a no as well. Yet many conservatives argue only child porn lovers would disagree with these filters. Because it's all about the kids. But there are kid-friendly filters available, including software from the previous government and its big scary internet campaign, yet few opted in. Many don't know or care, but many do, and they actively choose to protect their kids on their own terms. If so few want optional filters, where did the idea we need a mandatory national filter come from? You can't engrave a list on water. The worst of the worst content on the internet doesn't sit still waiting to be shut down. It's like a big evil tour bus that fans know the secret handshake to access. Our filters will be based on a list of fixed addresses compiled through a complaint review process. Right now, the time from complaint to review is well over a month. By then, this evil tour bus of evil has either left a big mess at some hacked website trying to clean it up, or it's nowhere to be seen. If they do block something, and it's really nasty stuff, it'll be visible somewhere else very soon. Unless real law enforcement gets involved. And we'll get back to that point shortly. It's a fake security blanket. With limited capacity for a workable blacklist in the face of a shifting target, one of the real dangers of this proposal is to falsely convince parents their kids are now automatically protected online. Just look at WebShield's customer comments page, I've got a link up at midnightupdate.com, and you're gonna see happy parents mentioning how they don't have to worry anymore about what their kids are doing online because they've now got a filter. But there are still predators and bullies plus smart-ass kids bypassing filters with ease. Dealing with all that requires hands-on parenting and educating kids on how to be smart and safe online. If we don't support good parenting, kids don't have a chance in the first place. Now, one of the big memes from the pro-filtering brigade is to suggest we should give it a go and show a little faith that the plan will all come together in the end. They're honestly using the word faith, but faith doesn't make technology work. Exceptional planning and development does. Now, as many of us against this filter will happily point out, we're against this filter, this plan, not the idea of using technology to put an end to the likes of child porn. If even this filter was optional and not mandatory, we wouldn't be fighting about it. But mandatory plus ineffective equals money down the drain, and we want to see our resources used more intelligently than that. So what should we do? Well, I'm all for policies that support and fund the real fight, not choosing options that ultimately aim to sweep problems under the carpet, or in this case, behind a filter. Child abuse is abhorrent. Let's spend every cent we have available on supporting the amazing crew at the Australian Federal Police's Online Child Sex Exploitation Team, or OXET. In spite of poor resources, OXET has been involved with some major successes in breaking global pedophile rings, yet the Labor government shaved a few million in funding off increases planned by the previous government. Now staff additions scheduled for this year and next have been delayed until 2011. In closing, if predators want to mess with your kids, what works better? A shower curtain? Or a crack online ninja squad busting down doors and throwing predators in jail? I know which I'd choose. Do you? That's all for tonight's update. Thanks for stopping by. Join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time for Daily Geek News. And for more coverage, visit midnightupdate.com.